So uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you for, for the opportunity to be here. And what I'd like to do is to sort of give you an update on work that we have been doing in precision planting. Um, give you an update for the last two years, what we have done, what kind of research we've done, and also give you a sense of where we want to move uh, in, the, in the near future with this type of work. So I want to recognize John Hume. He is an electrical engineer working with me and key person in integrating all this system. So as an introduction, if you look from a distance, this, this planter, it looks like any planter. And, and it did, I wouldn't say it's nothing uh, out of the ordinary, except that it's been retrofitted with electronic systems to control for, for control. And that is the point that I want to bring is, do we need control to make more efficient our, our planting operations? So, so keep, that, keep that in mind. Are, are you okay with how your planting systems operate? Or do you see opportunities to get even higher efficiency in, in, in those operations? So again, as an introduction, sort of a background information. So one of the things that I like about this project is that's heavily on engineering. I'm an ag engineer myself, and I look at soil also as a material and, and have mechanical properties. And we're looking into that aspect of mechanical uh, behavior of soil at the time of planting, very dynamic. So, uh, to give you only one example of this, you see how, uh, depending on the settings of the planter, depending on the soil condition, depending on the soil type as well, there, there's this uh, potential uh, to get, to get this, this type of uh, big chunks of soil. We are creating those big chunks of soil and we put the pressure of the machine over the soil. Right. So it's a momentary situation. It's only when the gauge goes press the soil and then uh, we put the seed and then there is uh, our closing wheels. All those forces interact and you can have with situations like this. The plants are trying to merge and they will try to find a path of least resistance okay, on a condition that we create. So the question is, can we create a condition that is more suitable for the emergence of these plants, which cotton is, is, a, is, a, is a, a plant that is not easy to make it germinate and establish as other, in comparison to other crops. All right, so why this will be relevant? In the context of controls, okay? because we can set the depth of our planter anytime we want. We can, uh, we can do all kinds of settings to the planter. We can also adjust the, the the spring loaded uh, system. But let me, let me say something in terms of soil variability. This is a field, I just picked a field west of uh, inter, uh, Interstate 85 and uh, in the Buckeye area. And this is just a quick survey of all the soil series that are in this particular field, 10 of them. Okay, And there's a predominance uh, of clay soils but also loamy soils are there. Okay. So the point with this is no matter how hard you try to set your planter to go and, and, and plant this field, it's going to be changing. The optimum is always going to be moving out of you. So that's why you get an hour later, and then you see all oh, the planter is now um, not working properly. You look at the, at the seeds and oh, it's too deep, or it's too shallow, or all those kinds of things, right? So the, the premise is, can we use our understanding of soil properties? Can we use understanding of the mechanics of, of, um, of, of the, the planter and the soil to make planting more efficient by changing parameters on the go? That is the objective. It'll take many more years to, to get there. So to give you a flavor of the type of systems that I'm referring to, uh, let's look at the hardware. And by the way, a, a quick, Point to make is that at the University of Arizona in Precision Ag program, we do not develop products. We do not develop <laughs> hardware. But we develop the technology to be integrated and then make it available and suitable for our conditions in Arizona. Okay. 
I've been talking, I'm going to be talking a lot about decision planting components. If that's only because we have a relationship with them and they give us a good price on the product. Everything that I say, you can get it on John Deere, you can get it on Case. It's up, it's up to you. I'm not representing any commercial uh, firm. So anyway, <coughs> at the top you have a display. This is a 2020 position planting. The, the, this unit is mounted on the tractor and it's controlling all these uh, components here for actuation. So you, we have actuators A, B, and C. So what, do we, what can we change on the go? Program through this uh, display, through instructions loaded onto a display like that, we can change the seating rate instantaneously. We can change the weight transfer. How much weight were we transferring to the planter to go deeper or to not so deep? We have two ways, the pneumatic and the hydraulic system. We have trench depth, depth control as well. The, we all are familiar with this uh, at the back of the row unit. We have this, this lever that we move. Uh, it is a, a staggering uh, positioning system. Well, now we can replace that with a motor and then do that change on the go. And lastly, it's not actuation, but it's monitoring. It's uh, some sensors that are mounted in these planters that uh, we can make very good use of that information. That's towards the end of the talk. Okay, so in 2020, we looked at weight transfer from the frame onto the row unit. Okay, you had to have weight to transfer to. So in this case, if, if you were to retrofit a planter, you need to add that weight in there. Many different ways to do it. We just have these solid bars because we don't have money to buy something more sophisticated, but we added 800 pounds to try to so that is transferred through this hydraulic system. And that's how we prepare for that. And we're looking at the soil condition, and how the soil can be prepared. And that's another thing. It is under the grower control. How you prepare your ground and how you can put it to a point that is mechanically optimum for, for planting. Okay? Given all the constraints that we have, well, it's good to know that our tillage operations are pre-planned. Uh, operations we can we can direct them towards a, a more optimal system. Okay, so what kind of experiment we did? I selected just sort of randomly uh, six different levels of weight transfer or downward force level. Okay, and I also selected four levels of consolidation or soil strength at the time of preparing the beds before planting. And you can see here, uh, this is a pump and trometer system, which is a low cell. Uh, we quantify those with this parameter called the econ index. Uh, we can just look, look at it at four different levels. So in, in non-technical terms, this is how loose is the soil at the time of planting. Is it just powdery or is it much consolidated? You guys have seen that in those conditions in your experience. Okay. So, over here, all in this graph, all I'm showing is that for one of those, this is a two-way factorial, for one of those levels of force, I'm looking at the soil strength, how it re reacted. There's a instrumented pin in these planters. So we have a we have a way to measure the response, the mechanical response of the system. And you can see how clearly uh, it responds when it's compacted. Well, the force sense here is less if your goal is to be this many pounds of pressure. Okay, so we got all this figure out, how it operated, and um, <clears throat> we were ready to get to the field. And we, indeed, in 2020, we got to the field, we got it set up. And one thing that we, we found really quickly, we are observing major differences in how these plants, this, this uh, in emergence, nature. But in the end, when they were a little bigger, the counts per, per unit area were identical. There was no effect. All right, so what's that about? We waited a little longer, and you can see that there was a substantial difference. Well, this picture is not the best that I could have used, but 
Uh, you see there are differences in the bigger, the greenness of these rows and these other rows. Almost identical uh, uh, sibling counts, right? But they're developing very different because they have to germinate and, and emerge on different soil mechanical conditions. Compaction, you can, you can think about a compaction in a, in a micro level. So what we did to evaluate these differences is that we um, applied this spectral index with these kinds of sensors that we have used in our program for, for many years now. And basically, um, to, to not to get too much, too much into the details of this, what I want to tell you is the larger the number means the greener and bigger plant comes out of that. Um, Spectral units. So less, we, less compaction and right and, 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 and even spread planting dip all at the same time. Are those are those the two big factors? Yes, and in this case, that's a very good point. In this case, we kept the the depth constant. Okay. 2021, I'll get into uh, depth since fresh. Okay, so what we found is that 46 days after planting. Uh, a major substantial difference in vegetation growth. 46 days, okay? Just by selecting this amount of force transferred to the, to the plant. And I did a, an attempt, it didn't look very nice, but this is an attempt to look at how this vegetation growth is related um, with the, uh, the, the downward force that we are adding, and this is a setting on the, on the plant controller, and the soil condition, the soil strength when we planted uh, this crop. And the attempt was for me to find is there any optimum, any combination of the two that will be optimum. We don't have a whole lot of data. That is because that's the reason why this is. 3D map looks uh, very, very, uh, not very clear. Not, there's not a, uh, um, it's not changing in a, in a smooth way, but it's clearly indicated that there is a upper, right? I don't have the resolution to find it, but it is somewhere about the 100 to 90 pounds added as weight transfer and soil that is consolidated to about 50 PSI, okay? So both of those things are under your control, under the grower's control. Because you can press, you, you can set the amount of um, downward force in the display, and they have control, and, and growers have control on how they prepare the ground, right? All the way from whatever tillage is done, whatever preparation is done. So, Andrew, yes, is yes, there Harry. There is absolutely kind because you know, for this, how the soil is consolidated um, is a function of how, how, how much moisture there is, among other factors, okay. right? So, again, this is a point that's under the grower control. Whether it's waiting a little more, whether it's I don't know. But but the decision to do and prepare the beds, it's a growing decision. How to do it, what kind of implements to do, how many passes, how much mulching, perhaps. Maybe we can come with a conclusion that we need to do more mulching to get to, to a, a more optimal condition. Excellent question, thank you. And I'm going to be talking more about uh, moisture before. There's time. So 2021, last year, what we did is that you know, we changed our, our emphasis and to put more emphasis on this depth control, the, the trench depth created by the, the, the disc openers, the depth and, and uh, downward force again. So uh, just as a quick uh, set of pictures to tell you that we set it from three quarters of an inch all the way to one inch and three quarters of depth. That will be the, the depth from the surface to where the seed is located in the seed trench. 
Okay, so um, talking about moisture, okay, this is something that uh, relates to that in, in, in many different ways. We excavated um, and just take some observations, and I really like how uniform this mountain is. And then there's in, in, in this direction, maybe in that direction as well. Okay, but you can also see the moisture profile. That, that's what. Um, Four inches. Looking at four inches, in, it's moving from very dry soil to very moist. The seeds will, will get perfect conditions and moisture here. It's coming to be. Are you okay, Karen? No, no, I'm Are you confused? Uh, am I confusing more? I know, I know. I don't know. You know, you, I've seen people that were capable of doing that. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. So many of the areas we explore in our research will be more from half an inch to inch and a quarter, perhaps. Well, but that's not my point, Karen. You're, you're, you're a farmer when you're doing this, just like the rest of us. And, and the loss of soil surface moisture happens as quickly to us during planting season as it is to you. So, I mean, that's that's just reality right there. But you, but you can have, you can have too much. You have too much uh, for where you plant next, you have too much moisture too. Yes. Okay, so let, let, me, let me do a clarification. Okay? Maybe this is something that, that I didn't think clearly. Whatever depth you say, whatever roller we place it in, is is that's not my point. The, the seeds were placed an inch deep. Right. Okay. What I said is the moisture profile in in a small in, in a in a relatively small profile. Is that clear? You had a question? Well, um, okay, so you're at an inch of depth, okay, and, and that is unusually deep for, you know, for a lot of people. And so is it the uniformity or is it the depth that, that you think is the same? The uniformity is, is purely a function of the, the rotational speed of the, of the, the seed. Yeah. Have nothing to do with the soil condition. And the depth is something that we decided in the input into this player. Yeah. It could have been whatever number it is. One, 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 one thing, you know, when, when you were coming from, then when you come from, those guys plant wet a lot. And out, out on our site, we plant dry. So that means a lot of things are different, you know, to make each method work. Okay. Right. So, um, Still, you can inch deep. You're attacking the water half inch an inch down. We actually do our football, and that half inch should get in a little bit of predetermination. So it still have good moisture. So it's not like water's four inches down. It's about one and a half, two inches down. I really hope I, I hadn't excavated deeper than this because it was never my point. To show you that that's <laughs> the position of a of a ruler. Come on, let's let's get past that. Right. Yeah, we 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 kind right. of watered off in some other areas. There. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, so yeah, whatever so it is, but, but yeah, please, from the, um, the lady, ladybug above only, when we look at that thing, <laughs> if, if that helps. In, in, See but, the importance of answers. <laughs> All right, let's keep on it. <laughs> All right, so anyhow. Um, at the time of planting, and this is something that goes back to the those sensors that I mentioned to you. There's there's now feedback um, sensors that can be very helpful. And Karen, maybe this is where we need to have that discussion. Look at this. So at the depth that we're placing the seed, how is the soil moisture changing from three quarters of an inch to an inch and three quarters? As expected. There's, there's more moisture. So here I'll bring the question is, how relevant it is to get, Cherry, to your point, to get that seed on, on lodged on, on good moist soil enough that it, it emerged. And then, sorry, germinate. And then it'll, it will be, its roots will be looking for that moisture, right? And, and soft soil above will help to go up and emerge. Right? How about temperature? Critical for early planting. Yeah. So temperature 
it's much, it, it, I mean, it's about two degrees warmer as we get into the shallow depth of land. Temperature, moisture, and, and, and soil tilt, or the thing they call it, so soil class, so the three terms I remember to, you know, taking years ago in school. You know what's interesting is, is the way I see all this technology is how can we can we can take that solid knowledge and automate it with machines that yeah, has that ability. Exactly what you've done. Yeah. <clears throat> so you have um, 16 days after planting. Yeah. And by the way, to, to that point of how how good are those plants and they're emerging. So this is this counter as a plant that emerged. But still, it's a, uh, it's, it's a fat chain, it's problematic, and they're going to be a productive plant for the others. Right? But how, in terms of light reflectance, look at light reflectance as a proxy for volume um, or, or, let's say, um, bigger of the plants. Okay? So once again, we found our maximum something in the, in the 100 to 110. So it is a relevant factor. Whatever setting it is, is relevant. And in this case, it's the same soil, same condition. So obviously, a different soil will have a different outcome. That's one. Um, yeah. And, and um, that's to say, too, that uh, very deep, it really doesn't matter. But um, it's difference in these bars have a different value. All right, so now let me go very quickly. I'm two percent the end time. Right. So, what more information can we obtain in these systems? I'm almost after, I'm a, an opportunistic engineer. So, if I see the opportunity to run a piece of equipment to the soil, to the field, can I get information? I always try to do that. So, this is a product by uh, position planting, and this is the seed firmware. This is the piece that presses that presses the seed onto the trench to lodge it in the soil. And in this case, what they have done is to add uh, two uh, spectrometers of some kind. Right? The, the details are not known to the public, uh, and temperature probe and moisture capacitance. <coughs> Okay, uh, last year we did a quick um, field in Yuma, Arizona. So these are soil temperature, uh, moisture content. I've been talking about these two, right? At the depth where the seeds are, are, are lodged. But the, the, these light based uh, spectrometers are for organic matter and a CEC, or the chemical. Mm -hmm. um, now, very quickly. We've been talking a lot about this data in, 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 our, in our station. This is uncalibrated. I have no idea how what the algorithms are used to come up with numbers for this. But what I can tell you is there's a consistent response and special structure to the data. So the key will be how can we merge technology with science in this case so that we have a better understanding of those two parameters so we can implement estimated properly. Uh, organic matter. Um, I lost the the, uh, the legend on, the, on that side, but there were like two or three percent. So clearly, not, not a level. That's easy. All right, let's look into the future, and, and I'm almost to the end of my call. Um, again, I'm an opportunistic person. I I would like to add more uh, to the to the systems to do more. And I've been thinking a lot about what is it that we can apply at the time of planting. Hey, if we have a 120 horse power tractor we're going to the field uh, planting, can we do more? And one of those ideas will be how about injecting um, fertilizer or chemicals? It's something that I have talked to Alex. I've been talking to the banker lately, and that is. Adding one more electric drive, we can then inject fertilizer or any, in, in this case, any liquid. And we can do it with commercially available uh, components. We can do it on two sides, 
of the seed firmer. This is where the seed, this is the seed trench, where we can do it right on top. Okay. And that will take very minimum adaptation to the baseline. Very minimal. They were they're already built. Okay. We don't need to, to build new controllers. Okay. This is an add-on uh, retrofit to this. Uh, in years past, I have not really gotten much direct exposure to this, or actually no exposure to this. But there is this is smart box uh, chemical applicators. So um, again, I don't know much about them, but um, they seem to be more, more popular in the Midwest. But looking at this concept, there is a newer uh, system by the, the, the same company that does the, uh, the cartridges of the, of the smart box. And that is the ability to have these chemicals, um, chemicals um, contained in these, these cartridges and then be delivered individually at, at the time of planting. Right behind the plant, the, 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 the planter, the, the, the CD, completely retrofitable. This is a John Deere uh, Maximerge shank. Uh, so it just, just added to it. With this, and if you use Trimble for your other steer, well, you can use that same display to guide variable rate applications for whatever chemicals are here. Could be maybe fungicide, something that uses a small volume, or uh, something that a micronutrient and it's a small amount. I don't know what you want, uh, but you can do up to three, and those can be delivered to, to the field on a variable rate basis, meaning areas of the field that you want higher or lower uh, rates. You can do the same path. Right? That is my opportunity here. That I think I. So, thank you for your attention. Um, I would be very thankful for questions, but, but I know many of you guys. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. You can email me. You can always connect with me through, through um, Iman. I'll be glad to answer your questions. And work with you at some point in time. Thank you very much.